let us understand the term educational technology what is educational technology is it a discipline is it a concept let us see that objectives of this module will be define educational technology in own words trace the development of the concept of educational technology with reference to indian context to understand what educational technology is let us do a quick exercise in our mind think of education system think of all micro level and macro level problems in any education system it may be related to curricula it may be related to classroom teaching it may be related to students problems whoever are attending classes coming to schools drop out problems this may be problems related to actual teaching learning problems related to evaluation assessment if you make a long list you will take another 10 minutes so just quickly think about such problems and let us see whether we can categorize such problems some problems are related to classroom situations school systems which can be in a way solved by teachers some problems can be solved as policy level where some experts in the field of pedagogy can be involved some problems are social problems may be some socio economic problems which cannot be directly solved by a teacher or by an expert in the field of education so let us focus on some problems which can be solved by teachers themselves which can be solved by some experts in the field of education solution of many of the problems can be changes in our own teaching learning innovations in pedagogy all such changes all such innovations in the field of teaching learning and evaluation come under purview of educational technology so what is educational technology it has two terms involved education and technology so to understand what is educational technology let us understand what is education let's go through some definitions of education the process or act of educating the result of educating as determined by the knowledge skill or discipline of character acquired also the act or process of training by a prescribed or customary course of study or discipline this is what brainymedia.com says let's see what mariam webster online dictionary says to provide schooling for so to choose to educate their children at home and to train by formal instruction and supervised practice especially in a skill trade or profession so basically education involves imparting some training education to develop some skills attitudes knowledge base it's a formal phenomena it may also mean to develop mentally morally or aesthetically especially by instruction to provide with information to persuade or condition to feel believe or act in a desired way so a nation may decide how my citizens should feel believe what kind of knowledge and information they should possess and education system may be evolved let us see what swami vivekananda says education is a manifestation of the perfection already in man we want that education by which character is formed strength of mind is increased the intellect is expanded and by which one can stand on one's own feet so basically characterization happens through education we become independent by acquiring knowledge by expanding developing our own intellectual powers our inner strengths our inner capabilities the same thing is also highlighted by mahatma gandhi he says by education i mean an all round drawing out of the best in the child and man body mind and spirit intellectual 
as well as spiritual development of a human being is considered significant in education. So whichever formal training environment tries to bring out inner qualities of a person develops skills, knowledge and attitude can be considered as education. What is technology? Think of a relation between science and technology. Sciences give us new discoveries and technology helps us implement those discoveries for the benefit of man, human being. So technology is always used to implement on nature, basically developed by human beings. Paul Sittler, a well-known historian of instructional technology, defines technology. Technology word is derived from Latin word texture, which means weave or construct. Paul Sittler says that technology does not necessarily imply the use of machines, as many seem to think, but refers to any practical art using scientific knowledge. So technology may not necessarily be machines. It may be application of some scientific knowledge in any manner. Now let us see what Jackie Zillel says about technology. The practical art is termed by a French sociologist Jackie Zillel as technique. He believes that it is the machine which is now entirely dependent upon technique and the machine represents only a small part of technique. Not only is the machine that results of a certain technique but also its instructional applications are made possible by technique. So technology is not only talking about machines but talking about techniques of using those machines, techniques of making life more efficient and effective. In this context, if we talk about educational technology, we realize that educational technology is not only technology, devices, machine used in the field of education, but techniques of teaching learning. These techniques are very important because even though you get vast technology, many devices available, if you don't have technique of teaching learning, if you don't have sound pedagogy, this technology will be a waste. So educational technology is basically about using various techniques of teaching, learning and evaluation if necessary by using technology. As we say that technology is application of sciences, educational technology is also application of scientific knowledge about learning. Say application of whatever psychological principles have taught us about teaching learning. Applications of some inventions some innovations in the field of technology, engineering, communication sciences. Let us see how educational technology is defined. Council of Educational Technology for the UK defines educational technology. Educational technology is the development, application and evaluation of system, techniques and aids to improve the process of human learning. Now here improvement of human learning is very significant. And so as to improve human learning, whatever applications, techniques can be used come under educational technology. Similar definition is given by National Center for Program Learning UK. Educational technology is the application of scientific knowledge about learning and the conditions of learning to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of teaching and training. In the absence of scientifically established principles, Educational technology implements techniques of empirical testing to improve learning situations. Here two aspects are very important. Efficiency is related to time and money. So learning should be more efficient. It should happen in less time and without much cost. But it should be effective also. Whatever goals and objectives we plan to achieve should be achieved effectively. The methods, techniques, pedagogies, technologies, whatever help us to achieve objectives more effectively can be considered in educational technology. Though we say that in educational technology application of scientific principles occur, 
it may not be always so. If there are no established scientific principles, then empirical testing is important. For example, a teacher can implement a particular innovative idea in her or his own class if she or he finds that this particular idea is very effective then her empirical testing may help in implementation of that particular technology. Pedagogical inventions happen like this. Association of Educational Communications and Technology Task Force says educational technology is a complex integrated process involving people procedures, ideas, devices and organizations for analyzing problems and devising, implementing, evaluating and managing solutions to those problems involved in all aspects of human learning. So, educational technology is a vast discipline, it's a moment. There may be educational technology organizations, associations working towards effectiveness of teaching learning. It talks about pedagogy, it talks about techniques, it talks about new ideas in the field of education. Let us see how development of educational technology has happened over a few years. First people started using gadgets, but remember that was the first generation of educational technology and today we have gone much beyond this concept of gadgets. When we were using gadgets and devices such as OHP, then television, radio, it was considered as educational technology. That was hardware. It was known also as hardware approach. ET2, it's second generation of educational technology. Now, ET2 does not talk about hardware only, but it talks about various techniques how to use this hardware. So, this is known as software approach of educational technology. Emphasis on techniques of teaching and learning rather than only aviates teaching aids is known as ET2 approach. So slides, slide projector, OHP is not important. How you write on the slide is important. What you write on the slide is important. How much text should be there on each slide is important. How to develop self-learning material is significant than what to show or how to show. For example, if we use very expensive technological devices and if we are recording traditional lectures again. If those lectures are not effective then expenditure on huge technology devices is of no use. That's why ET2 is important. Percival and Ellington in their educational technology handbook said in 1988, educational technology involves a systematic scientific approach to a problem together with the application of appropriate scientific research both from hard sciences such as physics and electronics and from social science such as psychology and sociology. Contribution of social sciences is also significant in the field of educational technology. How to implement software approach? UNESCO has given steps of implementing educational technology in the field of education. It starts with learners characteristics and entry behavior. So first we need to analyze learners behavior. Accordingly, we set objectives. We plan our teaching learning process in light of these objectives and for the analyzed learners. Then we decide how to present our content. We plan for our evaluation and feedback. This approach is important when we plan to use even technology. During the third generation, experts realize that only hardware or software approach will not work. We need to evaluate or look at any system from systems approach. We need to have bird eyes view. Considering any problem not in isolation, but studying the problem as a part of a huge system, it's systems approach. For example, if you are told that there is a failure in mathematics class of 8th standard, 
you just cannot solve that problem by giving instant solution. You need to analyze the problem by studying all possible components about students characteristics, about teachers, about views and attitudes of teachers towards students and of students toward teachers. Understanding this problem from various angles and then trying to solve the problem is known as systems approach. The process of teaching and learning can be considered to be very complex systems. While designing an instructional system, we try to break this complex system into various components, subsystem and develop or strengthen their interrelationships so that the desirable output is reached effectively and efficiently. This is what a systems approach is. Once experts started using software approach and started analyzing educational setup through systems approach, experts realize that the situation where learners get involved in learning actively is always an effective learning. So experts started working on interactivity. Self-learning material was developed during this period of time. Whether it is computer assisted instruction or whether it is paper based self-learning material, whether it is a classroom situation, interactivity became a significant aspect. Cooperative learning was considered as very significant aspect of teaching learning process. So this interactivity phase is educational technology fourth generation phase. We were talking about interactivity in self-learning material, interactivity in computer based learning material or interactivity in the classroom situations. But how is about introducing this interactivity among those who are not connected to each other physically. Interactivity is important, communication is important but if we use technology to connect to people then that becomes advanced phase. This advancement can be considered as fifth generation of educational technology. So 85 is interconnectivity. All learners, all teachers across the globe can be connected. All interconnected learners can exchange ideas, can generate content themselves. Knowledge generation via various modes of communication by learners themselves is also significant today. So interconnectivity is today's keyword and that is the fifth and last generation. Let's not forget that we are in fifth generation of educational technology today and let's work towards interconnectivity introduced in the field of teaching learning.